Many, many thanks for joining us on the What's Trending. I am Moses Omogana. So today we kick off with Indonesia and the executions that um, recently occurred. Aha, there are, those are the eight unfortunate. Now, Indonesia brushed aside last-minute appeals and executed eight people convicted of drug smuggling, although a woman from the Philippines was granted a stay of execution. An Indonesian firing squad carried out the execution in the early hours of Wednesday, sparking condemnation from Australia, Brazil and the rest of the world, who had made final desperate plea to save their nationals. The mass execution um, cements the hard line on enforcing the death penalty adopted by Indonesian President Joko Widodo as part of his war on drugs, an approach perceived by the United Nations as applying double standards. Four Nigerians, two Australians, a Brazilian and an Indonesian were executed in the forest quite close to the prison as family members held a candlelight vigil within earshot of the firing range. There they are. The four Nigerians executed amongst the nine were Okudili, um, Oyatanze, there he is, um, Martin Anderson, there he is, Rahim Salami, that's Rahim over there, and um, Obikwe Nuolise, there he is. One, two, three, and four. Um, Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott described the execution as cruel and unnecessary. You should hear this. Uh, these executions are both cruel and unnecessary. Uh, I want to stress that uh, this is a very important relationship between Australia and Indonesia, uh, but it has suffered uh, as a result of what's been done uh, over the last few hours. Now, a Philippines housemaid, Mary Jane Veloso, was spared at the very last minute. Mary Jane, who was arrested in 2010 after she arrived in, Indo in Indonesia with 2.6 kilograms of heroin, was withdrawn from the group after a request from Manila. The Indonesian Attorney General's office said Mary Jane would be permitted to give evidence after a woman suspected of planting the drugs gave herself up to police in the Philippines on Tuesday. But... In view of these executions, the world is very angry. Going online to find reactions, a tweet from um, Hugh Remington says, he tweeted a picture actually from the streets of Aust on Australia, and he says, seen on Sydney Street, hashtag Bali 9, and the picture there says, shame on you, Indonesia. And Keegs um, says, hot tip, you don't have to be pro-drugs to have compassion and humanity, hashtag Bali 9. ABC News, um, uh, quoting uh, Bill Shorten, says, um, I am angry and outraged at what has happened. There was no justice this morning. Hashtag Balinine. Quoting the morning there that the executions took place. And Miriam uh, Vais Zadeh says, um, So much of the world's grief could be reduced if each of us treated a life as one of our own. Hashtag Balinine. M. Lord says, um, at Peter underscore feet says, we the people should turn off all footage giving us close-ups of the, of the Bali Nine family's agony. Let us leave them at least in peace. Jordan Jansen says, without words this morning, you just can't give someone 10 years to rehabilitate and then put a bullet through them. Rest in peace, Muran and Andrew. Hashtag Bali Nine. Now, still on the death sentencing. Aha. The Chairperson House Committee on Diaspora Matters, Abike Dabiri Erewa, said that um, there are more Nigerians waiting to be executed in Indonesia. Speaking via broadcast, Honorable Abike said um, a federal government delegation in which she was part of in 2008 visited Indonesia and found out that there were 21 Nigerians who were on death row in Indonesia for drug-related offenses. Sad to note there. And she said nothing can be done as it is a law in Indonesia. She said for every five meter you walk in Indonesia, a sign post is displayed saying the penalty for drug trafficking is death. So I guess um, there is a public warning that however, whatever the case is, whatever the scenario, once you're in a position for drug trafficking, the death penalty is the end verdict. So in view of this, Bukala Samuel Wemimo, news anchor and an international correspondent as well, is standing by to join me in discussing the tragic Indonesian execution. I can't wait to hear what, what her thoughts are on this one. Stay with us. Welcome back. So, um, as I promised, Bukola is right here with me to give me her professional thoughts, you know, on the Indonesian um, killing and execution that the world is so bitter 
about. Thank you so much, Mukola, for joining us. Thank you, Moses. All right, now, first things first. Um, what are your thoughts on the Bali 9 or the Indonesian um, execution? Prime Minister of Australia, uh, Tony Abbott, has described this as cruel and unnecessary. And what they've also you? withdrawn their envoy from Indonesia. Okay. But if, if you ask me what I think, you're going to be putting me in a very difficult position, but I'm going to try as much as possible to give to you my views English. and to be objective. Okay. First of all, let's look at um, Indonesia. In that country, 40 people die each day as a result of drug offences, and another 4 million hmm. are currently suffering one mental illness or the other as a result of... Um, a drug abuse okay. so you know where that country is coming from hmm. you know why uh, you know they they have that law that yeah, says that anybody is such a capital yeah, offense yeah, yeah capital offense and mm. I was hearing you saying earlier that if you work within a mile in Indonesia five meters actually five meters in yeah. Indonesia you, see a, you see a sign saying drug trafficking has a death, pen uh, a death penalty so yeah. that's where the country is coming from but then again on the other end the execution of the Bali Nine is anti-democratic. It is against the principles of fairness, against the fundamentals of human rights, the right to life, the right to defend your life, the freedom of thought, freedom of association. I mean, life comes from God. I mean, come on, if there's a death sentence to those in possession of drugs, what happens to those who are, who are deemed as murderers? You know, I keep asking myself that really. Uh, well, <laughs> those who are deemed as murderers themselves I've already, um, um, well, how, how do I describe that? There's, there's a self-inflicted punishment okay. on themselves. You know, they've already died the first time. Once you arrest a man who has committed an offense, that the, the death process has begun for that man already. Hmm. And then when you murder him again, he has died twice. You know, you know it's interesting when you say they've already died because I, I, when I saw a few, few, you know, in a clip where I saw the families, you know, you know standing by, you know, watching, you know, just before these people were executed and I saw their faces, you could see there was a psychological death mm -hmm. already before the physical one. Before but let's not dwell death. on that. Now, we understand that, the, you know, especially the two um, Australians, you know, you know, spent about 10 years, you know, in rehabilitation centers for rehabilitation. But my question here is, I mean, I, I, I would like to understand that when you want to rehabilitate someone, you're expecting the person to change and you're expecting the best, to bring out the best of that person, even though the person doesn't necessarily see it. But why rehabilitate an offender and then waste the, the offender's life eventually? That's another difficult question because um, I tried as much, much as possible after this news broke to read, about, read up about Indonesia and I discovered that the Indonesian people themselves are divided on the issue of capital punishment. And when President uh, Widodo took office in October hmm. and he declared that there will be no clemency for convicted uh, uh, drug traffickers, drug traffickers hmm. uh, the people were not entirely happy. So the justice system creates room for an individual to be rehabilitated. But the question at this point is, did the Bali Nine get fair trial? Yeah. That's another question That's because if you go through, you know, the, the nine people, who are they? One of them was not found in possession of drugs when he was um, arrested. Mm -hmm. So did he get fair trial? Another was found to be schizophrenic. And then the Indonesia Attorney General requested a second medical opinion before his trial could be, um, before exec execution and trial could be uh, proceeded with. Mm. That was not provided for. And then even another was asked to be moved or something. There was an appeal for his case before he was moved to the Bang Bang Island where he was going to be um, executed. But that was not honored. Oh, so, so, the, so there were really more than nine? Y yes, okay. eight of them. Nine, eight, uh, nine of them, one is yet to be executed. Okay. So did they get fair trial? Did the prosecution fully exhaust their claims before they went ahead with the execution? That's the question we should be asking at this point. In the case of the schizophrenic uh, guy, that means that there was not quite enough transparency in his case before uh, that decision was reached. So, um, yes, as much as possible, the Indonesian justice system creates room, provides for rehabilitation, mm. but powers that be must have decided against all appeal to carry out um, the execution. Speaking, and of, it's really spe sad. speaking of trial, you know, we even, we even uh, got reports that um, the Nigerians and the, other, um, you know, um, um, the nationals involved could not even understand the language 
you know, so they really did not exactly. really know in detail the offenses that they were guilty of. Mm. So, you know, that, um, I don't know, I, I don't, I, I, like As you said, a matter of fact, I don't want to bring you my the wife of this. one of the Nigerians said that a bribe was demanded um, for, in, in exchange for the clemency of one of them. Do you think that would have worked? That wouldn't have worked with the presidency, definitely. with presidents yes, from with the, this with the presidency the in Indonesia being uh, involved in all mm. of this. That wouldn't have worked. But how true that is is what can't be verified. Yeah, puts, but of, it but puts of a course, big question mark there are a lot of question process, marks really. as to uh, mm. the trial and execution of the Bali Nine. So we're well, in essence, I guess we're hoping for a repeal of this of these laws. You know, the United Nations, you know, African Union, and um, you know, the world all international laws community of, of the Federation of every country ha has what is called the basic principles of fundamental human rights. Mm. Even the charters of um, organizations, governmental and non-governmental, respect the right to life. So, um, in the words of one of them who pleaded for clemency, he said, "This is not going to change anything." Somebody tomorrow is going to embark on a flight carrying heroin, certain kilograms of uh, cocaine. In spite of this, in spite scary of this event. clemency, mm. so yeah. there's something about you know the forbidden fruit or sin. An individual finds it to be mysterious. To, to f there's a certain attraction to it. He wants to carry it out despite the fact that it is forbidden. But there should be grace in all of this. The temptation, the temptation of, of saying, maybe yes. I won't be caught. Maybe I won't be caught. Maybe you I know, won't just be keeps caught. pushing them. And to think that 21 Nigerians are still on the death row waiting just to die. That's another thing we should talk about, Moses. Wow. I, well, I typed into Google um, how many Nigerians live in the UK, how many Nigerians live in, in the US. Okay. And all the results I got was from. Um, newspaper uh, uh, organizations. I'm afraid and to cut you that. in there, Bukola. The producers yeah. have screened my hair that we don't have much time. Okay. But just before we go, a certain Ghanaian funeral advert has been buzzing social media where people publicly advertise to be paid as professional mourners. Now, you'll be wondering what that could mean. Bukola, I'm going to need your opinion on this. Now, that's the picture, actually. Now, I'm sure the write ups there will not be legible, but it says here Do you want to boost your funeral? Hire out professional mourners to come and cry at the funeral. Below are the charges. Um, normal cry, Ghanaian, 200 Ghanaian CDs. Um, <laughs> crying and rolling on the ground, 300 Ghanaian CDs. Crying and insulting the beat, 400 Ghanaian CDs. Crying and threatening to jump into the grave, 500 Ghanaian CDs. For more info, call the number below. Thank you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say to this. But well, <laughs> if you ask me to what end, why are they coming to cry at, at an individual's funeral? But there are a lot of, um, you know, funny, unique cultures in Ghana. In Ghana, I remember our correspondent did a report on, um, you know, dying in a swagalicious way. You could hire a carpenter to design your coffin Put you in a the way you plane. want. You know, uh, design it and such you, like you, that. You could want to die in a coffin made to look like a fish. You could die in a coffin made like... Um, a buy a motorcycle, perhaps if you were an Okada rider before your death, you know. Okay. <laughs> so there are lots of unique things coming out of wow. Ghana. <laughs> well, like they say, business is business. But I, I really don't know <laughs> to what to actually call this. And now, um, yep. Uh, now talking about comment from blog uh, sites, a tweet, um, a comment from um, LWKMD underscore Ninja says, "One can mistake them for Eurobars." That's a very cheeky comment to make there. And Judo Chris says, hey, hey, all now hustle. <laughs> 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 hustle indeed. And of course, this brings us to the end of the What's Trending. Don't forget to let us know what you're talking about using the hashtag TVC Nigeria. And of course, Twitter handle to always follow is at TVC Nigeria. Many thanks for watching. I have been with Bukola Wemimo uh, Samuel. She's been Samuel here. Wemimo. Samuel Wemimo. My apologies to think that she's my colleague and I can't even get her name correctly. My apologies for that. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Moses Morgan and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye for now.